So there always seems to be a debate on whether to choose a Snapdragon version of the new Galaxy S series smartphones or the Exynos version. And every time when Samsung launches their new flagship series smartphones, the Snapdragon version wins in terms of performance and efficiency. And this has been the story since the Galaxy S5. However, I think that gap in performance and efficiency is going to be lesser each time due to the increase in performance of new Exynos chipsets. About two years ago, Samsung launched two variants of the S22 series lineup, one with the Exynos 2200 and the other one with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Many customers preferred the Snapdragon version of the Galaxy S22 series because it outperformed the Exynos 2200 in everything, such as cameras, battery life, performance, efficiency, OS, and many more. Consequently, the Exynos 2200 was a flop, leading to confusion among users that which one to prefer, the Snapdragon version or the Exynos version. But this time, most flagship users won't face this issue now. Because this time, Samsung launched the Galaxy S24 Ultra with only one variant. And that is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. However, Samsung also launched the Galaxy S24 Standard and S24 Plus with two variants. One with the Exynos 2400 and other with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. You might ask, is there still any performance gap between these two? Are there any heating issues? thermal throttling issues or many more, well, don't worry, your favorite YouTuber is going to clear your confusion. In today's video, I am going to explain everything, performance, efficiency, AI capabilities, display capabilities, camera capabilities, benchmarks, features and many more. And I will also explain that which one you should buy, between the Snapdragon variant or the Exynos variant of the Galaxy S24 standard or the Galaxy S24 Plus. So watch this video until the end, as I will explain everything in details. In N22 version 10 benchmarks, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 outperforms the Exynos 2400 as expected. However, it's essential to note that the Exynos 2400 scores are still respectable. While Exynos 2400 scores are similar to the Apple S17 Pro and 2 version 10 scores. Specifically, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 achieved a total score of 2,106,106 points, whereas the Exynos 2400 achieved a total score of 1,768,171 points, making it 16% slower than the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's total and total version 10 scores. So there is 16% performance gap between these two. Now breaking down the scores, the CPU of the 8th Gen 3 achieved 513,835 points, whereas the Exynos CPU achieved 443,384 points, making the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 CPU about 4% faster than the Exynos 2400 CPU scores. However, when it comes to the GPU scores, the 8th Gen 3 smashed the Exynos 2400 GPO scores, scoring remarkably 902,878 points, which is tremendous, while the Exynos 2400 GPO achieved 663,086 points, making the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 GPO about 26% more powerful than the Exynos 2400 GPO. This is a considerable difference, indicating that the 8 Gen 3 will perform better in graphical performance compared to the Exynos 2400 especially if you have the Galaxy S24 Plus with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 variant. Additionally, the 8 Gen 3 memory and UX scores are also faster than the Exynos 2400's UX and memory scores. The memory score of the 8 Gen 3 is 387,756 compared to the Exynos 2400's 361,454, making the memory scores of the 8 Gen 3 about 6% faster than the Exynos 2400. The UX scores of the 8 Gen 3 is 334,649, whereas the Exynos is 300,247 points, which is about 10% slower than the UX scores of the 8 Gen 3. In summary, the total score of the 8 Gen 3 is 2,106,106 points, while the Exynos 2400 achieved 1,768,171 points. Based on these scores, it is evident that the 8 Gen 3 variant of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus will provide faster CPU performance, GPU performance, memory, and UX performance. Therefore, it is recommended to go with the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy variant, or the Galaxy S24 Plus, or for the standard Galaxy S24. But the entire story changes when it comes to the Geekbench 6 benchmarks. We observe a substantial difference in the N22 version 10 benchmarks between the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Exynos 2400. However, in the Geekbench 6, the performance is actually the same, mainly due to the similarity in the CPU scores of both chipsets. I mean the CPU scores of both chipsets are comparable, unlike the GPU scores resulting in similar Geekbench 6 scores. And for the first time, the Exynos chip is closer to the Qualcomm's than ever before. In the single-core performance, 
the Exynos 2400 achieved 2195 points and the 8 Gen 3 achieved 2203 points which is almost the same. In multi-core performance, the 8 Gen 3 achieved 7021 points and the Exynos 2400 achieved 6959 points making it about 1% slower than the 8 Gen 3. However, this difference is not significant considering the overall performance of the Exynos 2400 and this is the first time for the Exynos to match the single core scores and the multi core scores with the Snapdragon. So these scores are pretty much similar in the Gigwin 6 performance. So that might give you an idea that how faster the CPU of the Exynos 2400 is compared to the 8 Gen 3s. Here are some other benchmarks for these two chipsets and I see little difference between them. You can observe. The asset compression rate on the 8 Gen 3 is higher as well as speed of rendering, image detection, HDR, background blur, photo processing and ray tracing. So based on these benchmarks, you can say that the 8 Gen 3 is performing better in camera performance, display capabilities, photo processing and in gaming. And yes, 97% of you haven't subscribed to my channel. So if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel will be wonderful. So both of these chipsets are excellent in terms of CPU configuration, offering robust architectures with a diverse range of core configurations. However, the Exynos 2400 stands out by providing 10 cores, whereas the 8 Gen 3 has 8 cores. Let's delve into these cores. The 8 Gen 3 features one ultra-fast core based on Core X4 clocked at 3.3 GHz. The high-performance cores based on Core X720 clocked at 3.15 GHz. Two additional high performance scores also based on Cortex A720 clock at 2.96 GHz. And finally, two power efficient cores based on Cortex A520 clock at 2.26 GHz. This core configuration impressively covers a spectrum from ultra fast to power efficient cores, offering a well rounded performance. On the other hand, the Exynos 2400 boosts 10 cores, including one ultra fast core based on Cortex X4 clocked at 3.21 GHz, which is slightly slower compared to the 8 Gen 3's Cortex X4 cores, which is clocked at 3.3 GHz. However, the noticeable difference lies in performance scores. Let me explain. The Exynos 2400 has two high performance cores based on Cortex S720 clocked at 2.9 GHz, and three additional high performance cores also based on Cortex S720 clocked at 2.6 GHz, and four power efficiency cores based on Cortex A520 clock at 2 GHz. Let me explain this in detail comparison. The high performance scores of the Exynos 2400 have lower clock speeds compared to the 8 Gen 3's high performance scores. For instance, the 8 Gen 3's high performance scores are configured as 3 plus 2. The 3 cores are clocked at 3.15 GHz and the 2 cores are clocked at 2.96 GHz, whereas the Exynos 2400 high performance cores are configured as 2 plus 3. The 2 cores are clocked at 2.9 GHz and the 3 cores are clocked at 2.6 GHz. And this is the key difference in core configuration and clock speeds. And that is why the 8 Gen 3 offers a superior CPU setup. Additionally, the remaining specifications are identical. Both CPU features the latest ARM Module 9-2 instruction set architecture and both are manufactured using 4 nanometer processor node. But the Exynos 2400 was manufactured by Samsung and the 8 Gen 3 was manufactured by TSMC. However, the entire story changes when it comes to the GPU performance. Let me explain. If you recall earlier, the GPU scores of the 8 Gen 3 were approximately 26% faster than the Exynos 2400. Well, here is the reason why. The 8 Gen 3 features Adreno 750 GPU, a part of the Adreno 700 architecture. This GPU stands out as one of the fastest GPU on the planet, offering two execution units and 1536 shading units with a frequency of 770 MHz. On the other hand, the Exynos 2400 offered the Samsung Eclipse 940, belonging to the Samsung Eclipse architecture. This GPU is designed by AMD with RDNA 3.0 architecture, and this GPU operates at a frequency of 1009 MHz. While both GPUs provide hardware accelerated ray tracing, global illumination and more, the 8 Gen 3 outperforms the Exynos 2400 in both scenarios. As you can observe, both GPUs are maxed out, but the Exynos 2400 lags behind significantly. It's important to note that Samsung collaboration with AMD is commendable. Even though the performance may not match that of the 8 Gen 3, it doesn't mean that the Exynos 2400 has poor performance. On the contrary, it still performs well. However, the crown in terms of GPU performance is undeniably taken by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now let's talk about the thermal management of both of these chipsets. As you know, Exynos chipsets have a reputation for being too hot. 
and throttling a lot, while Snapdragon has a reputation for being efficient, faster, and being cold. Well, that's not certainly the case anymore. This year, the Exynos 2400 also excels in terms of heat management and thermal performance. Let me explain. The Exynos 2400 has four efficient cores and fan out water level package FOWLP to boost thermal management, resulting in rather good thermal and heat management. As for the Edge Gen 3, it performs a little bit better in thermal throttling and heat management. So if you are not a power user and going to buy the Galaxy S24 standard or the Galaxy S24 Plus, then you can happily choose the Exynos 2400 variant of the Galaxy S24 standard or the Galaxy S24 Plus. However, if you are a power user and looking for the best and fastest smartphone, then you should definitely choose the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 variant for the Galaxy S24 or the Galaxy S24 Plus. It will provide you with faster performance as well as efficiency. The RAM and storage configuration of both of these chipsets are a little bit same. I am saying a little bit, so let me explain. Both of these chipset RAM are based on a quad channel LPD.5X RAM with the memory frequency for the Exynos 2400 is 4200 MHz and for the 8 Gen 3 is 4800 MHz. So there is about 600 MHz of difference. So that's why I'm saying a little bit similar to the Exynos 2400. And that is why the Exynos 2400 lags behind in terms of RAM and storage compared to the 8 Gen 3, as we noticed in the N22 version 10 benchmarks. Plus, both of these chipsets can support up to 24 GB of maximum RAM and can support UFS 4.0 storage technology for faster read and write speeds. When it comes to connectivity, the 8 Gen 3 clearly excels, particularly in download and upload speeds. Let's delve into the details. The 8 Gen 3 is equipped with the Snapdragon X75 modem, known for its exceptional network capabilities. It boosts the most 5G bands, providing superior efficiency and performance, with download speed of up to 10,000 Mbps and upload speed of up to 3,500 Mbps. And this is remarkable. On the other hand, the Exynos 2400 features the Exynos 5300 modem, which is also commendable. While it offers slightly slower upload and download speeds, it still performs admirably, with download speed of 9,640 Mbps and upload speed of up to 2550 Mbps. Although the download speed of somewhat similar, but a significant difference emerges in upload speeds. Users will undoubtedly notice this discrepancy, especially when uploading the files. For instance, content creators like me, who often upload videos to the YouTube or something to the Google Drive, will observe a noticeable difference in upload speeds of the Exynos 2400 and the 8 Gen 3. Moreover, both chipsets are equipped with the Wi-Fi 7 in a Bluetooth 5.4, ensuring advanced wireless communication features. So both of these chipsets have own device AI capabilities, but somehow the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 variant excels when it comes to the generative AI. Let me explain. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has something called Hexagon NPU and its sensing hub, which offers advanced features like GPT chatbots, stable diffusion, LLM, and fixing photos on the fly. It can also turn text commands into stunning images from anywhere and translate between languages in real time with improved on-device AI support. You can watch my full review on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The links are in the description or you can find right here or right here. Now, when it comes to the AI performance on the Exynos 2400, the chipset can also do the same but a little bit slower, I would say. You see, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can handle up to 10 billion parameters on the device. So that is something you should keep in mind because 10 billion parameters are significant. Additionally, the Exynos 2400 chipset also can perform the same AI tasks like GPT chatbots, stable diffusion, LLM, and fixing photos on the fly. And it can also turn the text commands into stunning images from anywhere and translates between languages in real time. But at the end, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 excels in AI performance as you will see in display capabilities and camera capabilities. So both of the chipset offers amazing display capabilities. The Exynos 2400 can support a maximum display at 4K at 120Hz, Quad HD Plus at 144Hz, and Full HD Plus at 240Hz. Additionally, while the 8 Gen 3 can support 4K at 60Hz, Quad HD Plus at 144Hz, and Full HD Plus at 240Hz. Additionally, the 8 Gen 3 can support an external display of up to 8K at 30Hz, while the Exynos 2400 can support 4K at 60Hz. And the rest of the features of both displays are the same, such as HDR capabilities, both support HDR, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. And both of them can also support 10-bit color depth 
and RAC.2020. Well, the camera communities are not that different either. I mean, both of them offer same camera performance. You may notice a little bit improved picture quality on the 8 Gen 3, but the majority of the pictures will look the same. And yeah, both of them offer 18-bit ISP, image signal processor, and features like advanced noise reduction, HDR recording, and many more. But the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has a step ahead when it comes to the AI performance in the Exynos 2400. For example, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 have a feature called In-Video Object Remover, Nightside 2.0, and many more. When it comes to supporting the camera sensors, the Exynos 2400 can support a single camera of up to 320 megapixels. And the 8 Gen 3 can support a single camera of up to 200 megapixels. However, I consider this camera performance a draw because there is no 320 megapixel sensor out there. And the 8 Gen 3 clearly excels in camera capabilities, as you saw. And when it comes to the video recording capabilities, both of them can record at same resolution like 8K at 24 and 30 frames per second, like 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second, but the 8 Gen 3 can record 4K at 120 frames per second, as you will see in the Galaxy S24 Ultra, 1080p at 30, 60 and 240 frames per second, and slow motion at 1080p at 960 frames per second, and can also record SGR10 Plus videos. So I have discussed everything. We saw their benchmarks, their CPUs, their GPUs, their memory, their AI capabilities, their display capabilities, their connectivity. And I can confidently say that the 8 Gen 3 clearly wins here and takes the crown of the fastest chipset on the planet. It has better AI features, better performance, better efficiency, better thermal management, and many more. But the Exynos 2400 is also a good chipset. For years, the Exynos chipset has always lagged behind. But this time, its performance is closer to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 than ever. It's so close that some of the benchmarks are actually performing the same as the 8 Gen 3. So I'm sure next year Samsung Exynos chipset will match the performance of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4. So for instance, the Exynos 2400 is also not bad for the Galaxy S24 Plus or the Galaxy S24 Standard. But the 8 Gen 3 variant of the Galaxy S24 Standard and the S24 Plus will give you better results in almost everything. So if you are planning to buy the Galaxy S24 Plus or the Galaxy S24, then you should prefer the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy more than the Exynos version. And also, if you are not a heavy user, let's say you buy it for casual gaming or casual camera performance or casual browsing, then the Exynos 2400 version of the Galaxy S24 Plus or the Galaxy S24 standards are also not bad because the Exynos 2400 will give you similar performance in the Galaxy S24 Plus or the Galaxy S24 standards as the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. Maybe a little bit behind, but Exynos 2400 is also not bad for these two smartphones. So this was the full detailed comparison of these two chipsets. And as you know, making a detailed comparison videos like this takes a lot of time on scripting, shooting, editing, and uploading. And unfortunately, 97.8% of you haven't subscribed to my channel. So please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to never miss a detailed comparison videos like these. And also, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Your feedback is highly appreciated as it motivates us to make the best videos possible. So my name is Hamza, this is Stick, and see you in the next video. If you want to watch the full detailed review of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, then that video is right here. And if you want to watch the full detailed review of the Exynos 2400, then that video is right here. Thank you for watching.